All right, good evening and welcome to our regular uh, business meeting. We're going to have a silent prayer for our invocation and it'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right, before we get started, let's conduct roll call. Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Commissioner Gail Hambert. Present. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. I'm here. All right, Madam Clerk, we're all present on California. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our July 6th Board of Commissioners meeting. The first order of business is adoption of the agenda. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Hambert. Hambert here. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, pull out under the consent agenda. Put out, pull out number uh, five. Okay, number five is a recommendation for first contract amendment twenty one dash forty seven eviction intervention project for Clayton County. Is there a second? Second. Properly moved and second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Is that to the regular agenda? To the regular agenda. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Those opposed? It's unanimous. Any others? All right. Well, hearing no others, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Our next order of business is a presentation of Veteran of the Month. All right, our Veteran of the Month is somebody who we all probably know, someone who's ingrained within the community and is committed to making a difference here in Clayton County. Our Veteran of the Month for this month is State Representative Mike Glanton. Representative Glanton is a United States Army retired paratrooper, airborne, and war veteran. Rep. Glanton is a recipient of the Federal Human, hu Humanitarian uh, Service Medal, the Kuwait Liberation Medal, and the Georgia Secretary of State's Outstanding Citizen Award. Rep. Glanton is a licensed and ordained minister and, and founded New Life Christian Church in Jonesboro, Georgia. He is the president of the Clayton County Ministers Conference and co-founder of the Coalition of Clayton County Clergy. He is Clayton County Arts 2008 Legislator of the Year. He is the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce Community Service Award recipient for 2008. He currently holds the Vice Chairman position on the delegation. Glanton was first elected to the Georgia House of Representatives in July of 2006. He serves on the prestigious Appropriations, Education, Public Safety, and Homeland Security, Defense and Veterans Affairs House Committees, as well as being appointed by the Governor to serve on the Joint House Senate Committee on MARTA, Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Oversight Committee, and the Governor's Blue Ribbon Education Reform Commission. He also serves as Vice Chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee on K-12 Funding and Education Subcommittee on academic support, as well as on the Metropolitan Atlanta Regional Transit Solutions Committee. He was appointed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives to serve on the Georgia House Study Committee on Military Installations and the Military Affairs and Storm Water Utilities. 
He was recently appointed as chairman of the MARTOC Subcommittee on Information Technology and Security. He also serves on the Council of State Governors of Government's Southern Legislative Conference Education Committee and the National Council of State Legislators on the Causes and Consequences of Youth Homelessness. He is a member of the Georgia Charter Schools Commission's Charter Schools Petition Review Panel. He resides in Jonesboro with his lovely wife, Perla. He is the proud father of five adult children, grandchildren of eight, uh, grandfather rather, of 18, and great-grandfather to twins. Please help me recognize and honor State Representative and our Veteran of the Year, Representative Mike Glanton. He's not here by any chance. Please. Especially because Especially with 4th of July, we should never forget our veterans and those who currently serve to continue to fight for our country. Madam Clerk. Our next presentation is July. It's Parks and Recreation Month. Clayton County Board of Commissioners proclaims July as Park and Recreation Month. July 6, 2021. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Clayton County. And whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas Clayton County recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, I, Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim July as Parks and Recreation Month in Clayton County, Georgia. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia to be affixed this sixth day of July in the year 2021. given three minutes maximum time to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the Board. Barnett Spearman. Good afternoon. I'm here to represent. Sir, if you would state your name, if you'd like to take it, so totally up to you whether you want to take that off or not. Uh, Barnett, state your name in your uh, county residence, please. Barnett Spearman, in Clayton County. Um, I'm here to represent the Biscayne neighborhood over on Highway 42 and Biscayne Boulevard. Um, 
I have a very, we have a very diverse neighborhood over there. Most of the homeowners and those who live in rent are trying to keep the neighborhood very clean. Um, we have an area when you come into the neighborhood that's sort of wooded on both sides and um, sometimes people think that's an area where they can come and dump their refuse, their garbage. And when we try to clean it up, um, if we go to the landfill, we have to pay a minimum of $40. And so um, someone had dumped some furniture there. I own a utility trailer. I tried to um, see if I can take it over there, clean up the neighborhood. I did call Clayton County uh, Sheriff's Department. They had a um, illegal dump situation, but um, I wasn't able to get anything out of that. And of course, if one person sees somebody dumping, the other person is going to dump. That's one issue that we're having over there. I'm hoping that we can, someone can um, help us um, within the Clayton County to have send someone over there to clean that neighborhood up because it has been neglected um, for quite a while. And the wooded area is sort of overgrown and that's why people feel they can come over there and dump. And also, uh, we have a lot of children in that area. And the, um, this Cane Boulevard is a one way in and one way out. And people are coming through there with high rates of speed. Um, the street runs parallel to 675, um, which is uh, probably to my right when you come in. And um, the cars are coming in as though they were on 675. So I was hoping that I could talk to you all and one of the commissioners and have um, someone, uh, we can get some speed bumps over there to slow these cars down. So again, it's a very nice neighborhood. It's a quiet neighborhood. Most people care, but it has been neglected. Um, in the last couple of years, as far as that area, when you come in, the people from outside come in and want to dump. And um, of course, some people who may live over there feel that it's you know, part of that highway. Yes, sir. So first of all, I want you to get with the police chief who's sitting in the back of this room, uh, Chief Roberts. Talk about speed and, and some increased uh, patrols or higher visibility. They'll take care of that, no problem. As far as the uh, illegal dumping and overgrown weeds and so forth. I will talk to the ward and have there's each district has a mm -hmm. code enforcement officer or team that is responsible for making sure that they police those areas and keep an eye out. So I will have him to get in touch with that person and make sure that he or she goes through that area as well as I'll pay a visit to the area myself. So uh, you can feel free to give me a call up here at the at the at this office and I'll be only too happy to help you out or speak further to you about it. And I appreciate it because I, know, I don't know if you remember, but when you were the Clayton County Police, you know, I, uh, we used to sit and talk about different subjects and you told me that before and I always appreciated that and I'm glad that you know, I was able to speak to you and the other commissioners and hope that we can get this resolved. I do work for Clayton County myself. I work for Clayton County School. And uh, of course, um, the reason why I do, because I appreciate working for Clayton County. So we have an issue, and I address it to you all. I hope that it can be resolved. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Mm -hmm. We all need to take care of our community and our county. So. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Linda Ingram. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. First of all, I hope State I have your name. State your name, please. Oh, <laughs> Linda Ingram, City of Riverdale, uh, Clayton County. Uh, first of all, I hope you don't mind me saying this. <laughs> um, I stand with Victor Hill. He has done great in this county, and I don't know if they're political or what it is, but people want him out, and I'm tired of it. And people need to stand with the guy, the man. He. Uh, I've known him for years, voted for him, and I just think it's time that people stand up and, and, and this county needs it. Of all the metro counties, what's going on in metro county, uh, Atlanta, Fulton County, Clayton County needs Victor Hill back. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay, um, Clayton County Animal Control. I hate Zoom. I cannot do Zoom, whatever that's called. Uh, I'm 76 years old, I'm an old senior, I'll never learn. My daughter lives in North Atlanta, she cannot come down here and help me uh, get that out. So I don't get to go to the meetings on uh, uh, Clayton County Animal Control. 
and I want to interact with people that I know and talk to. I don't want to sit home and watch them. Uh, if I don't know something over there, I have to knock on the door, I get a truck driver, but I don't know the major like I did Major Godfrey last year, uh, uh, Captain Litton, they retired, they're gone, so we need help to get back on, <laughs> on straight on this thing with Zoom and everything. Okay, next thing is, I'm going to try to hurry, thank y'all, thank y'all Clay County uh, Commissioners. Uh, uh, Commissioner Davis, you're my commissioner in Riverdale. I haven't met you. He knows me. <laughs> uh, thank you. I called about code. I couldn't get Riverdale to do anything. I called about somebody up there. They are working on it. It looks so much better. Thank y'all so much. Um, uh, whenever I need y'all or need somebody, I can always come over here, talk to the co uh, all the commissioners, talk to you. And I get to respond. It may not be what I want, but I don't expect to get it every time I say something. So, yes, uh, thank y'all. Thank you to the departments that I have um, met. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate everything. And uh, again, thanks for the Clinton County Police. But and I see them, and they've done a good job. I've never had a ticket, believe it or not. But uh, Victor Hill and his crew comes through my neighborhood all the time. Really proud of them. That's all I got to say. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you for Thank your you. comments, Mickey Garver. You mean I don't have to ask about taking my mask off? I can do whatever I want? I can hear you loud and clear either way, so you're good. I can't speak loud and clear. Okay. May I take Feel free to take off? it off. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. My topic today, again, is mandatory trash pickup. This topic is continued from the last commissioner's meeting. Let's review mandatory trash pickup and what it does and does not do. Mandatory trash pickup will put small trash haulers out of business. Mandatory trash pickup puts the burden, I've heard, of non-compliance on code enforcement. Mandatory trash pickup cannot confirm prices or longevity on pricing. Mandatory trash pickup is a two-fold problem. Yes, it addresses trash, but it does not address litter. What you are saying with mandatory trash pickup is your citizens are not smart enough to have their trash taken care of. I'm here to say we are smart enough. 99% of the citizens have trash pickup. I would even venture to say that 100% of the people in this room have trash pickup. You are trying to reinvent the wheel. As our leadership, as our leadership, we want you with us to put all citizens on board, all businesses on board, all vendors on board, all visitors on board, with a Clayton County clean and beautiful reinstatement with leadership, education, and enforcement, we can have a clean and beautiful county in all areas. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, that concludes uh, public comment. Thank you. The board will now entertain the consent items. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent items? So moved. 
Is there a second? And I'll second the motion. Are there any questions on any of the items? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is item number five, recommendation for first contract amendment, IFQ number 21-47, eviction intervention project for Clayton County, Office of Performance Management. What is this item, Carol's? Ms. Rogers, are you online? Ms. Rogers? I'm here. Yes, are you clear on the item that's to be presented? Yes, sir, and I, I'm ready to present if you're ready for me. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, the recommendation is to amend the contract for IFQ 2147, which is the eviction intervention project for Clayton County. The recommendation is to, uh, to amend the current contract with Africa's Children Fund, Inc. They're located in Atlanta, Georgia. The request is to extend the term of the contract from an additional one year and update the scope of services and the dollar amount of $400,000. Funding is available through the emergency rental assistance funds the department recommendation amendment are attached for your review and information. The request is for you to approve the recommendation, authorize the chairman or his designee to execute all necessary documents to accomplish the intent of the contract and authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget accordingly. All right, is there a motion? I'll make a motion, make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, uh, Chairman. Uh, yes, I, I have several questions. First of all, one was answered. I, I did find out they're out of Atlanta. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Once we were um, giving money out, I have not had a good experience with this organization. Don't know anything about them other than when they come, you know, when they bring, uh, we bring something for them to receive money. Uh, does anybody know how many counties they serve other than Clayton County? Couldn't tell you how many counties, but I know that they spend a good amount of time in Clayton County with some of the, uh, with the, especially the youth. Uh, uh, okay. Um, okay. One of the experiences uh, that I've had, that, that we've had, uh, Tina and I, because my constituent aide and I, uh, we sent somebody over a couple times where they were turned down. They could not receive um, help or assistance. And then one time they were willing to help somebody, but I'm just giving an example of an amount of money now. It wasn't this exact amount, but if the person was requesting $10,000, I'm not, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe $10,000 or 10, maybe $1,000. Let me just say $1,000. And their thing was, okay, we will give you that, but you need to give us $500. And, you know, like the person told us, if, if they could afford the, the 500, then they probably could have found the, the total thousand someplace and all. So but anyway, have not had good experience. Um, do we know how many people they have helped in the past? Do they have a, what kind of track record do they have with us? Well, they are one of the organizations that receives our grant funding. Uh, so you have you receive every year that they apply with the rest of the 501c organizations and the uh, book that finance produces and within that book there's a listing of how many people they actually serve every year so I think that's something that finance could help you uh, okay. give you the, the stats from last year well I would like for our citizens to know too because we do get calls and inquiries is it is it possible for someone from that organization to come and let us know how many counties they serve? Is Clayton County being the finance financer for whatever other counties, or do they just serve Clayton County? It sounds like they serve other counties also. Uh, and, and just give us a report on their spending and all. Uh, maybe at one of our work sessions. I would appreciate that because, like I say, the times that uh, we have requested assistance from them to help our citizens, uh, particularly my constituents and all, 
I have not received any help. And I would like to know, since we're giving them so much money, uh, you know, just where the money's going. Well, the money that we're giving them is for the, the constituents of Clayton County. But let's do this also. I see Chief Judge Keisha Wright Hill is online, and she works closely with them in that initiative. So maybe she can quickly give you some insight, further insight oh. on what they do. Um, okay, before before the judge yes, comes on, let me let me say this. I yes, understand a little bit because I did talk with uh, our CFO earlier, and I understand about this project. Yes, uh, what they're doing, but I'm just speaking of money that we have given them in the past. What have they done with that money? Because, like I said, I don't know anybody they, that they've helped in Clayton County. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Great. Who has that? I'm sorry. Okay, well, come on for it. All right, good afternoon, Chairman and Board. Um, Commissioner Hamburg is 100% correct. This is a different pool of money, but we wanted to make sure that the Board understood what the African Children Fund would be doing for the 400000 <clears> The <throat> Emergency Rental Assistance Funds were, um, if you remember, the Board allocated a million dollars initially for the dispossessory process in the courts. With that, um, they have expended that $1 million that the board uh, allocated initially ar around the CARES Act, and we've impacted over 450 families with that $1 million. Under the emergency rental assistance funds, we got an additional 400000 and because the African Children Fund served as the conduit for the, the CARES money, we wanted to extend the contract so that they can continue the process. But the magistrate court um, under Chief Judge um, Keisha Wright Hill is serving as the primary conduit as far as it, the of getting that funding out. So they're only serving as a facilitator in this case. Um, as the judge sees fit with um, the tenants in space, she then provides that information to um, the African Children Fund, and then in turn they serve as the facilitator and get the money out. Because the judge's office selects those who can be served. That is, that is correct. And then the African Children's Fund cut the check, basically, and then they pay the landlord. That is correct. All right, uh, Judge Hill, are you on? I am. Good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon. I just wanted to speak briefly to just to say that my experience with the African Children's Fund in the last, uh, since March, has been a good experience. Um, they have been very professional. Uh, they've worked diligently to ensure that we are able to um, disperse the funds to as many Clayton County residents as possible. And um, as the uh, Mr. Sanford stated just a few minutes ago, I myself determine who is able to get those funds and they just you they disperse those monies so they've done everything um have met and exceeded my expectations as far as being professional as far as being diligent to ensure that we spend uh to service as many citizens as possible um and i have i've had no issue with them as far as my experience with them since march and, and if you need to speak with anybody, I believe Victor and Baba is uh, over the American Children's Fund. But I can I can only speak on my experience with them. But it's been um, a good experience thus far. I have a question, Commissioner Franklin. Is it the African Children's Fund or the American Children's Fund? Because I'm I too am trying to do a little bit more research, and um, the information that was previously provided to us also does not coincide with the responses that I'm receiving in the community from citizens. And um, I have a, so I need to ask that question first. Is it African or is it American, African Children's Ch Fund? African Children's Fund. And let me just remind you, once the, all the funds have been dispersed, and of course there's no, there's no more funds that can be uh, allocated. So I don't know what kind of complaints y'all have been getting, but if they are in reference to not being able to get access to the money, then there may not be any of the funds that was available at the time. What would facilitate us to use them as opposed to using HUD? Or I thought we just uh, gave some additional funding over through HUD and then the Housing Authority. I think there's a in, um, in this whole process and funding because I, I can definitely attest as a commissioner I'm constantly getting phone calls about people in need and not getting responses from 
these organizations and as commissioners we award this funding but um, we're constantly getting people who say they're not getting a, a proper response and I understand Judge Heal um, stating what she stated but I don't know if we want people to get to that point. How can we help them before we even get to that point? So I think there's a lot of confusion there, but I'm ready for a vote on this. Any other questions? Yeah. Judge Hill, are you recommending these folks to the African's Children Fund based on your findings in the court? I have no reason to, to oppose it. I okay. mean, they're not as far as what they're doing with the magistrate court, as was stated before, they're just writing the checks. Right. I'm giving them um, files saying, see if these people, if we can get um, work out some arrangement with this landlord and this tenant, they are merely facilitating. So right. the, whatever monies are given to the court to use, they are just dispersing them. So I think it's a different issue um, that's being raised as far as what is being done with another pool of money it's all of this money is going out to the citizens of clayton county and it's been they're just dispersing it so whatever can, issues or concerns i don't think that um is is connected to this program yeah. and that's what i was getting at so in essence this fund is different from how folks are going after hud funding they're totally separate funds totally two separate processes yes yeah, so let me say this the, the judge and her staff goes through the files of those in imminent danger of being evicted. Mm -hmm. And then she says, okay, this pot of, of people right here are in danger of losing, getting put out on the streets of Clayton County. So they give that list to the African Children's, Children's Fund, Fund, and then they just write the checks. They don't ask no questions. They go on the judge's recommendation as to who needs to be saved in terms of not being evicted. Right, I just wanted to clarify that process. Thank you. Right. Let me just say this last time, and, and I'm, I'm ready to vote. Uh, the judge was right. Uh, the issue, there are two different issues. Now, I, I think they have to answer, you know, to, to where the money is going. But I'm just talking about previous monies that have been given to them. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how the Clayton County residents are being uh, serviced. So, but I'm ready to vote when everybody is. Yeah, and I understand yeah. your, your uh, desire having somebody come and speak and that might be something that you might want to do with all the 501 C's who receives money but neither here nor there if there's no other questions we'll proceed on with the uh, with the vote all right hearing none those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed abstain um, the person that um, or the company that we're voting to award the information to is not here to answer the questions and even though questions have been answered, uh, not enough substantive information. All right, Commissioner uh, Hambrick, what was your vote? No, I'm fine with, with where this money is going. It's, okay. it's the other monies that I'm concerned about. So I'm, I'm okay with this one. I'm voting yes on this one. All right, uh, three approvals and one abstention. It passes. Mr. Ch Chairman. 26, 27, 28 are board appointments. All right, first board appointments to the License Review Board. This is Commissioner Franklin's uh, selection. Ms. Rosanetta Kirby's term on the License Review Board will expire July 16th, 2021. New term will begin same day and will expire July 16th, 2025, four-year term. Commissioner Franklin, are you ready to proceed? I am. I would like to re Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I'm ready to reappoint um, uh, Ms. Rosanette Kirby. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next board appointment is Code Enforcement Board. It's an at-large uh, selection. Ms. Maddie Welch term expire, expires on July 16th, 2021. New term will begin July 16th, 2021. Expire July 16th, 2024. Again, this is an at-large appointment. Are there any recommendations? All right, here now, Madam Clerk, hold that for next meeting. Next board appointments for Solid Waste uh, Authority Board, Commissioner Davis' selection, Mr. Rob Leatherwood. Term will expire July 31st, 2021. New term will begin July 31st, 2021. Expire 
July 31st, 2025. Commissioner Davis, you ready? Yes, uh, move to reappoint Mr. Rob Leatherwood. I spoke to him earlier. All right, I'll second the uh, motion. Those in, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Do we need an executive session? Good evening, yes, on litigation, personnel, and real estate. I'll make the motion, go into executive session, litigation, personnel, and real estate. Is there a second? So move. Or second, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed. All right, it's unanimous. All right, Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Commissioner Gail Hambert. Here. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. I'm here, but I could not get on executive session. Okay, okay. Everybody's accounted and present, accounted for and present. Uh, motion to reconvene. So moved. Uh, second the motion. Those, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Reed. Would you like me to take them both? Please. Okay. Um, first is a um, settlement agreement um, in the matter of Jamar Dye, D Y E relating to an accident that occurred on March 8, 2020 at the intersection of Frontage Road and Old Dixie Road in Clayton County in the amount of $40,000. Um, and uh, this also involved um, Clayton County employee uh, Zachary Perry. The next is a settlement agreement with, um, in the matter of Daryl Clark, Clayton County and Christian Steerley related to an accident that occurred also on March 8, 2020 at the intersection of Old Dixie Road and north of Holiday Boulevard, Clayton County in the amount of $22,000. Is that motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Hambrick. Are there any questions? All right, hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. I was not able to get on. I, I can't hear you. Say it I again. was not able to get on to the first listen. I have to say, it's fine. No worries. I okay. still vote. No worries. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ambles. So I wasn't sure. Was that, was Commissioner, was your vote a vote in favor or, or against? or? It was in favor, I believe. It's in favor. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Good evening again, commissioners, chairman. On behalf of Clayton County Police Department and per civil service rule 5.201, Human Resources is requesting to hire a legal advisor at an advanced step. We're uh, requesting to hire the legal advisor at grade 31, step 9. Total compensation is $107,439. The cost of the request is $7,159. And that legal advisor is for the police department, correct? Yes, sir, for the police department. All right. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. move. Okay. Commissioner Hambrick made the motion. I'll second the motion. Are there any questions? All right. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll uh, second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. It's unanimous. Have a good evening.